as I said, there's different ways to represent these molecules and these structural formulas and the somewhat abbreviated condensed formulas are the common ways of doing that. But as we learned in chapter one, these molecules really are three-dimensional objects. So sometimes we want to look at these molecules in a way that reflects that. This next slide does that for these same four uh, molecules here. It shows ball and stick models and space filling models. Remember for a atom making four single bonds, it's going to have that tetrahedral shape around it and that's what's determining the bond angles in the ball and stick models. And they give us uh, a little bit better idea of what these alkanes really look like. Um, sometimes these are referred to as straight chain molecules, but for something like butane you can see it's really kind of a zigzag chain. Um, but each carbon again is bonding to the number of hydrogens needed to give it four bonds. Uh, the space filling models, we won't use these as much, but they do show up sometimes. They are a little bit closer to the truth as far as the actual shape of the molecule, but um, you can see some of the atoms get obscured uh, because they're hiding behind other atoms. Um, both of these remind us that these are three-dimensional types of molecules, and, and sometimes we need to appreciate that. Um, but these names, as I say, have become part of a system uh, that allows us to not only identify these molecules themselves, but also to identify them when we make certain modifications to them. And we'll be talking about that as we go along. Those first four, you need to know those names, and you need to know these alkanes here as well, uh, with five up to ten carbons. And those names there identify them as having those particular numbers of carbons. Pentane, just like a pentagon has five sides, penta pentane has five carbons. Uh, hex is the term for a six carbon molecule, just like a hexagon has six sides, hexane has six carbons. Hep is the word for seven, heptane, uh, octane, just like a octopus has eight tentacles, octane, eight carbons. Uh, nonane means nine, and decane uh, means ten carbons, just like decade is ten years. Uh, there are alkanes that go beyond this with 12 carbons, 20 carbons, 30 or 40, and they have their own names. But it's only the first ten that I want you to keep up with as far as being able to put a name with the structure. Most common alkanes do feature no more than ten carbons in a chain, so uh, these first ten here, uh, that's a good group to keep track of. The main reason there's so many alkanes is not simply because we can keep adding carbons in the chain, but because they don't always have to be constructed so that the carbons are all in sequence one after the other. And that brings us to this next slide. And this is really why the alkane family is so large, because they oftentimes exist as groups of structural isomers. If you look at butane, the way I showed it to you just now, it's the four carbons in sequence, like you see on the left. But for four carbons and ten hydrogens, there's another way to put them together so that the octet rule is satisfied and all the atoms are happy, and that's what you see on the right-hand side. Three carbons in sequence and then one that's said to be branching off the middle carbon. So these two forms of butane uh, are considered structural isomers of each other. Uh, your book uses the term constitutional isomers. The way they are put together is different, even though they share the same molecular formula. And so that's a very common and important phenomenon in the world of organic chemistry. And butane is the first alkane for which that is uh, a possibility. So there you see the definition for what structural isomers are. Because they're different in connectivity, they will have different names. And one way to distinguish these is just to stick the prefix iso in front of the one on the right and call it isobutane. Um, the fact that they have different boiling points means they do have different properties in general, and so they should have a difference in the way we refer to them. And we'll see some more examples in the next segment.